Hey, Vance here. I got a little fridge here we're going to take a look at and uh, fix it if we can. This is one from my wife's classroom. She's a school teacher and this is, uh, this is their logo, the Bulldogs. Um, these little mini fridges, I did another video on fixing one of these a while back and uh, most people don't realize just how simple these devices are and they often can be fixed pretty easily. Uh, so there's one class of problem on these mini fridges that you can't fix and and in those cases it's best to actually just dispose of it and buy another one because you can buy one of these for about a hundred bucks and that is if you have a refrigeration leak so there's a there's a small refrigeration system inside these uh, so it, it, it contains a refrigerant if you get a leak um, it, it's pretty much not repairable uh, the little coils in there can leak often or the joints can leak um, and and it'll sit there and run and run and just never get cold um, but this particular one is fixable and I know that because my wife described to me what it's doing and what this little fridge does is it gets too cold it never turns off and it freezes anything you put in it so it works too good if you will so when you have this kind of problem it is one of those classes of, of uh, issues that's pretty easy to fix actually and uh, the part is not that expensive so uh, I'm going to show you how to do that today uh, on this little fridge so here's the back side of this little cube fridge. Um, they all look really similar and they're all, they're all work almost just the same. This particular one's made by Hire. Um, it really doesn't matter um, what the brand or any of this information is because they all pretty much work the same. Um, one of the reasons why these are so easy to fix is this wiring diagram. So if you look at, um, if you look at this wiring diagram, you can see it's just extremely simple. So you've got a power plug here um, if you follow this circuit around, you've got a thermostat. Item C over here is the overload protector for the uh, compressor. Uh, D is the compressor, that's this little round circle. And then E is the uh, PTC or the uh, starter relay for the compressor. Now on the other video I made a while back, it was the PTC that was bad. And uh, I've got another video that kind of shows that. In this particular case, it's the thermostat. You might ask, how do I know that it's the thermostat? Well, in this case, um, when you have a refrigerator that runs constantly and is just too cold, that just means the thermostat's stuck closed and it won't open. Down here in the bottom is the uh, compressor. That's the big black piece you see right here. Um, over here to the left, actually this, uh, this little plastic cover is usually you know, mounted on here like this or something. It looks like that's fallen off. Um, I may try to fix that while I got it in here in the shop too. But um, So this is actually that PTC relay that, that we just saw. Since that's off, you can see it. Um, the biggest thing on these devices when you're uh, diagnosing them is to just plug them in. And if this compressor is humming and buzzing and you let it run for a while and it never gets cold, throw the thing away. But if you plug it in and this compressor is not buzzing and is not running, then you need to try to fix it because it could either be this little PTC, it could be the thermostat stuck open, not stuck closed, but stuck open, um, or it could be that overload, um, the one that we saw on the wiring diagram. So if it's just the compressor's not running at all when it's plugged in, then you should try to fix it. So one other thing I think it's worth mentioning is on these little refrigeration systems, whether it be a mini fridge or a dehumidifier or some little device that has a little miniature refrigeration system, if it lasts this long, like if it if it goes on and on for 20 years and it, and it doesn't ever develop a leak, you should actually keep it. Uh, because those systems either develop a leak in the first two years or they last for a long time. So I could make the argument, since this is just a hundred bucks, to just go buy a new one instead of putting $20 into a replacement part. But this one actually has proven it. The refrigeration system has proven itself to be real reliable and it lasts. So we're going to milk this thing and keep going with it because if I went and bought a new one, I'm telling you, they're not that reliable. One of those $99 refrigerators in one to two years, a lot of them develop, uh, develop refrigeration leaks. And my advice there is if you ever buy a mini fridge, uh, or a dehumidifier from Amazon, pay the extra for the warranty. Uh, the, the extended warranty uh, from Asherion uh, because you will use it. I've used it before. I've bought dehumidifiers on Amazon. I've paid for that warranty. 
And two years later, it quit working and I actually filed a claim and they're actually really good at taking care of you. And they give me a, the amount of money I spent on the dehumidifier back to buy another one. Taking a look on the inside of here, um, you will see the thermostat is right here. And you can see that it's, uh, it's a dial and you can set it wherever you need to set it. And um, uh, like I said, uh, what Jana told me is that, you know, it didn't matter where she set this dial, the thing ran nonstop and never turned off. So to take this apart, um, there's one screw right there, actually. You've probably seen tool sets with these little stubby screwdrivers, and you've probably wondered, what the heck are those for? Why would you need a little tiny screwdriver like that? Well, we have found one of the cases. So this thing had uh, these two posts that just went into uh, holes in the uh, top and then there was just a screw, one screw that went in there. So very simple, one screw to remove it. This piece that's in here, the electrical device with the screws, with the wires going to it, that's the actual thermostat that uh, is connected to this knob. So you'll have to get that knob off and uh, you can just pry it off with something. Um, uh, when possible, I try not to use a screwdriver on plastic. This is a little plastic uh, trim removal tool from uh, for, for use on cars. All right. And now there's a, uh, a hex nut right there which we'll have to use a socket to get. So in my case it was a 14 millimeter. There's three wires hooking to this, but then there's this uh, this stiff wire, and uh, that one is permanently attached, so you can't disconnect that one. That actually is the sensor wire, and if you follow it, it comes over here and is mounted right here. Now, this is the actual sensor that is reading temperature. That device we just saw was the uh, the switch that opens and closes. This is actually where the where the temperature is measured at the tip of this wire. So once you have it removed um, you can look at this label and this is what you're going to use to find your replacement part. Uh, I think what I Google searched was WPF 27.5S. Uh, I think I actually found one that has the exact same number. I think I got it on Amazon um, but it, uh, it came up under the exact same number. So if you look at that, you can see the sticker looks different, but it's the same number. This part was about, uh, was about $20. Um, it was more than I wanted to spend, and you can actually get them for about 10 or 15. Um, but I wasn't able to get one that was in that price range that was an exact match of the part number. It's very likely you could get one of the other ones and it would probably work. So we'll uh, unwind this wire here. And uh, since we kind of know um, that we want to mount it the same way, we're just going to put that same kind of bend in it that this one had. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. You want to be careful and not kink this wire because this is actually a, a piece of tiny tubing with a little bitty hole in the middle, and that's how the... Uh, the thermostatic function works. Th this is called a capillary tube, so there's actually a little fluid in here, and that fluid uh, expands when it heats, and that's how the thermostatic function actually works. Okay, so the ground goes to here. Uh, this one actually has two ground terminals, and they have that little symbol on them that, uh, that means ground. Um, but that's the green wire. They actually have two different sizes in case your fridge has the smaller or larger one. Then the other two, which are these two terminals, 
There are three sixteenths quick connects. Those are the uh, the thermostat uh, switch, and the polarity does not matter. So you can put either wire in either place, either place, and it will still work. So you just want to just shape that kind of how the other one was so it'll all fit in here. Oh. It's new and has a new nut on it as well. Okay, so I just uh, made sure it was in there correctly. So there is a click here at off, which is good. And then you rotate it and you go all the way up to seven. So that's all good, like it's supposed to. Okay, that was definitely the hardest part of this job. So, um, as you can see, this ended up popping out of this little thing while I was messing with it. This was very difficult to route properly. It ain't even perfect, but yeah, it, it's it's good enough. Um, so I've got it in off position and I've plugged it in. So let's we're gonna listen carefully to see if we can hear the compressor turn on when I turn it on. All right, that was the compressor coming on. Came on right here at one, which makes sense because. Uh, you know, the things at room temperature has been sitting for a while. So we'll, I'll just set it to five and we'll just wait and make sure it turns off. And that way we'll know it's fixed. Okay, so I uh, gave that refrigerator 24 hours uh, with it set to like five or so where, where Jana was setting it uh, with a bottle of water inside and the water got nice and cold. It did not freeze, which it had been freezing. So that was a good way to test it. Um, and the refrigerator turned off like it was supposed to once it got to uh, some cold temperature less than freezing. So I uh, hope this is useful to you. Maybe if you have a little fridge you can uh, fix it without having to just throw it away. That saves you some money and it keeps it out of the landfill if it still can work. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.